What is up, you sexy mofos? This video's been a long time coming. These are my personal Arma 3 settings. What I do to improve my FPS, you guys already know, Arma is not really optimized that well. It's very CPU intensive. I'm gonna show you guys what I do to tweak up all of my settings so that I can get the best FPS out of the game. All right, so first things first, let's talk about Arma 3 parameters. This is something that you have to consider before you even launch the game. If you have the game on an SSD drive, that's great. It's gonna launch even faster. These are the default parameters that are here. Now I have a different set of parameters that I like to use. Now I'm gonna show you how to set them up before you launch the game. So we're gonna go ahead and close out over here. We're gonna copy these parameters. By the way, I'll have uh, all of these parameters that I'm using right now in the description below as well. You're going to copy them, you're going to open up your Steam, and you're going to go to your games. You're going to right click on Arma, go to properties, and then set launch options. You're going to go in there and paste the parameters that I have already set up. Now these parameters are only going to help you load the game up much quicker. There's a whole bunch of different set of parameters and a website that Bohemia has for all the different parameters that you can set up for the game before it even launches. I will also leave a link for this website in the description as well. Now go ahead and hit close and launch the game. Once the launcher starts up, you can actually look in parameters and now your new parameters have been added over here. When you hit play, the game will automatically load a lot faster. All right, now let's talk about the meat and potatoes of the FPS. Let's talk about the in-game video settings. And I already have a small scenario over here set up. Um, I'm using Tanoa as an example because the map does have a lot of objects, uh, has a lot of terrain, different kinds of terrain, and as you can see, there's a lot of detail in the grass, and there's um, trees, there's bushes, there's mountains, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, I've got this little scenario set up over here. I've got a lot of vehicles uh, that'll add to the decrease in the FPS, and we're going to try to tweak the best possible settings that we can get out of this video card and the CPU that I'm using. So here we go with the video settings. As you can see, my FPS is twerking up and down on the top right hand side. Now the first things first is sampling. This is the actual resolution uh, that you'll be loading your screen in as. 100% the game looks amazing. You don't have to go more than that. If you do, you're going to lose a lot of FPS. I think that 100% the game looks absolutely beautiful still. Textures. Now the lower your textures, the more pixelated your game is going to get. I leave mine at ultra because my CPU and my GPU can actually handle it. Uh, I don't want to mess with it, but if you want to increase maybe a few frames, maybe four or five frames, you can drop it down to standard or high. Even at high, I think it's the quality of the game is really, really good. Some people like to leave it at high and get a few frames, but I personally like to leave it at ultra because I stream, I make videos, I want the game to look as good as possible. Objects. Now, objects to some people aren't really that important. You can leave it at really, really low if you want to. Um, but for me, again, it's important that the game does look really aesthetically pleasing. It looks nice. Everything comes in, renders in really sharp. That way I don't have to go in and mess with it in my video editing software. So this I always leave to high. It's sort of like the in-between standard. If you turn your objects up to really, really high to ultra, you will lose a few frames because when you're loading into a bigger city, uh, you will t generally tend to load a lot more objects, a lot more things, a lot more things like cars, vehicles, buildings, and stuff like that and you'll lose a lot of FPS. All right, let's talk about terrain. And when I say terrain, let me show you what I mean. All right, so we've got some beautiful grass here and some bushes. Oh, hello. What up, dude? <laughs> Time for a nap. All right, so we've got some grass here. We've got some trees and some bushes and I can really explain to you what terrain, lowering and increasing uh, the levels of terrain and what it really does. Now, if you were to lower terrain completely down to nothing, as you can see, the grass completely disappears. That's not going to be the case all the time because servers will usually load their own set of rules. When you go into a server, sometimes you'll have standard terrain, which is pretty much normal for all servers. So this is not going to help you any. You might think that, oh, I'm going to lower my terrain and I'm not going to see any grass and I'm going to see people running around and everything. It's not going to work that way. Server side, they've already got terrain set to standard. So that's, you know, it's it's going to defeat the purpose. I personally like to have terrain at ultra because it just makes the game look that much better for me. 
the next setting, shadows. Now this one, I don't quite completely understand why or how it works, but I do know this. If you leave shadows to disabled, low, or standard, you are going to put more load on your CPU. However, if you leave your shadows to high, very high, or ultra, you're going to effectively uh, put shadows onto your GPU and your GPU will actually take the stress of loading in shadows. Now there's also an option over here where you can load in your shadows uh, 200 meters which is 200 meters is the max and all the way down to uh, 50 meters so that uh, I don't know if you can tell there is no when I drop it down to 50 meters there is no shadow on the cathedral over here however if I was to jack it up you can see that the shadows are back on the cathedral because obviously it's more than 50 meters if you were to lower your shadows to just 50 meters obviously you'll see a boost in your FPS your FPS will go will jump up to about 105 but if you were to do shadows all the way up to 200 meters as you can see you'd lose about 20 frames per second this right here is entirely up to you what you want your settings to be if you want 20 more frames you could jack it up to 105 right here by leaving it at 50 meters but that again is entirely up to you I want the game to look good even at further distances so I leave it at 200 okay particles this is going to affect you when you're in a multiplayer game say you were in a game of battle royale and you have your particle set to high and somebody's out there throwing smokes at you it's going to kill your pc you're definitely going to get a lot of loss of fps uh, i personally leave mine to standard because i don't think it's that important to see how much smoke is generated or uh, when you're running around or uh, your car actually leaves a trail of dirt behind it that's what particles is clouds I don't even know why people would have this to high it makes no sense uh, unless you're like in a dog fight or in some kind of aerial battle or something like that but then other than that clouds don't even make any sense alright PIP this is a little complicated it's picture in picture as it explains right there we're talking about mirrors cockpit screens etc etc so I'm gonna actually show you guys I'm gonna cancel out of this screen and I'm going to show you what real PIP is in the game. All right, this is what I mean when I say PIP. This is picture in picture. As you can see, I can see part of the cathedral, the crane, and the tower in the rearview mirror. Now, as I drive my vehicle, I can actually continue seeing what is behind me, including the jet, which is right there. So the quality of, at which the picture in picture loads in, that's basically it. That's what that is. That's the quality of the picture in picture in the rear view mirror. So that's up to you guys. If you want the quality to, to be great, you can put it to very, very high, or you could put it to ultra, but then you're gonna lose some frames. You're definitely gonna be losing some frames. I like to leave it at standard. That way I can still see the stuff that's behind me if I'm stuck in like a first person vehicle and not lose that many frames. All right, I think this is, I think this is the most important part to improving your frames is visibility. If visibility will affect how many more frames you can squeeze out of your CPU and GPU. The further that you can see, meaning your overall visibility, the less frames you will have. You can see that quite clearly right here. Now, for me, obviously, I'm not going to be able to see 12 kilometers out. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, I usually leave it to about 1500 which usually gives me really good frames but also my objects as well I leave it to about 1500 so I can see cars if you play Battle Royale you know you're gonna be jumping out of a plane and uh, you need to be able to see things below you from pretty far out um, again this these settings can be tweaked better uh, some people have it set to one kilometer and uh, objects also to about one kilometer which helps with your overall FPS but again these settings are entirely optional you can turn them up and down based on the kind of FPS that you want out of the game I personally prefer to leave it at about 1.5 kilometers I get decent FPS out of it and not that much lag in big cities and last but not least let's talk about the lighting guys HDR I leave it to standard you only have two options right here I prefer standard because my dynamic lighting is set to ultra now this this right here is going to affect you uh, a lot if you're in a city and dynamic lighting is when you have a lamp that's next to a road it illuminates part of the road and you'll be able to see objects and people that are running on the road a little bit better because you have your dynamic lighting to ultra Again, this is entirely up to you. I like it set to ultra and cities at nighttime look fairly good. All right, last but not least, let's talk about water reflection. 
I don't know. I leave it at disabled because I don't see much of a change when I set it to very high. I've tried it out a couple of times. The frames pretty much stay the same. Uh, not that much of a, of a decrease in the frames, but I, I will say the game, as you can see, my shadow does look a little bit better. Um, when I turn it up to super, super high, there's not the, the, the dual rendering of the shadows. But overall, I just, I just don't see that big of uh, an increase in the quality of the reflection and the, the, the water um, the water itself. So I leave it a disabled entirely up to you guys. You can set your own preferences. It's not going to take that. You're not going to take that much of a, uh, an FPS dump when you set it to really, really high. The fuck was that, dude? You almost took off my head. So that's basically it, guys. These are my settings. I hope you found this video fun and informative. And if you did, please be sure to smash that thumbs up. Give me a like. If you have any questions for the real DP, let me know in the comments below. All right, guys. Stay strong. Really, really strong. And I'll see you in the next episode. I gotta go. Bonus content coming up. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. Wait for me. What the fuck? Goddamn fucking stupid AI! Get back here! Whoa! Best cinematic.